Welcome back to Her Advantage. This is episode number 47 and I have an incredibly special guest and special lady with me today. Sinead, how are you? Yeah, pretty good. I mean, I've finished an early shift at work, um, so, you know, tired from that, but otherwise I'm good. I'm talking good. about Sinead's just given us a little bit of instruction that she's got two dogs with her that are supposedly entertained, but they may be guest appearances in the next little while. So we can all stay tuned to meet Kenai and Lexi at some point, hopefully or hopefully not in the next, you know, 40 minutes hour. Hopefully not. (laughs) So Sinead, how do you and I know each other? I've been working with you for, what is it, coming up to two and a half years? It's a long time. In the coaching space? Yeah, it is a long yeah. time. So what I basically want to hear from you today, and I'll obviously help you through this, but, you know, I want to hear a little bit about, you know, where you started, how, you know, the journey that you went through, some of your really big realizations, um, and maybe where you're going as well. So can you tell us a little bit about... I think we need to provide further context to, you know, the Sinead that you, that I met two and a half years ago. Can you give us a bit of context about who she was and why she was the way that she was? Two and a half years ago. I mean, no, it's got to be more than that now. Cause I've been up here and I live in final Queensland now. Um, and I've been up here for four years. Um, so but- for the last two and a half years on zoom, I've been like we are now in a turtleneck jumper and Sinead's like, oh, it's really hot. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, but Adelaide Sinead was in corporate life. She was getting bronchitis, sinusitis, pharyngitis all at the same time, three or four times a year. Um, I was getting migraines. I was absolutely exhausted all the time. I was probably the most stressed I've ever been, but of course I wanted that corporate job and I loved pleasing other people to my own detriment. I suppose I'd look back at that. Um, I had, you weren't like, it's not something that you woke up in the morning and you were like, Oh, here's the list of people that I'm going to try and do all the things for today. Like that wasn't a conscious pattern that you were doing. No, I think I'd tied myself worth to being someone who can solve all the problems. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I was a video producer and video producer is someone that's really organized and coordinates everyone and has a crew of like, I don't know, anywhere from like three to 30 people that I have to tell what to do and be in charge of. And So it's like, kind of ironic that the app that I was having tech issues with was trying to get my camera to work. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah. So I had all these like well, what I know now is PCOS symptoms um I've always had acne since I was a kid which is why I was put on the pill at 16 for um I always had trouble losing weight I could never sleep at night but I was always tired um I had a very low metabolism like I was never hungry um and I was eating 1200 calories a day because that's what society told me to do if I want to lose weight not even um, society, like you sought health coaches and things like that, didn't you, to, yeah. Well, more online stuff. So I signed up for like an Ashy Bynes program and so I followed her diet and followed her exercise stuff, which, yeah, I lost a lot of weight quickly, but I didn't feel good. Um, and then I went to see a naturopath and she put me on this vegan diet for a few weeks to try and detox my system. Again, I lost weight, but the moment I went back to eating regular food and I was always eating good food because I grew up on a farm and mum grew half the stuff so we always we didn't eat takeout or anything like that um yeah did I cover my background (laughs) which made was yeah I think you know talk to us a little bit about how you were how you were mentally looking back now I was very stressed and probably quite anxious about all of the things um and 
all of the things just being life. <laughs> um, but I thought I was in a good place. Like I had a good social life because I would so always yeah, go what defined being in a good What defined being in a good place? I thought I was happy. I thought that, yeah, my so I was had a good social life. Like I always went out and hung out with friends all the time. You had um, the love of your life. Yes, yes, we like him. We married him. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I would go to the Adelaide Fringe all the time or I'd go out for dinner or like I was not exercising like I am now at the gym, but I was doing movement. Like I'd go for walks with friends. We'd do like jetty to jetty or um, just like movement on the farm or going to the beach or things like that. So there was never any like routine to it. I just thought that I was doing what I was supposed to be doing while starving myself. <laughs> I was fasting yeah. too because that's what I thought. Why did you fast? Why, where did that? I think that was part of the craze of like the 16, 8 or whatever it is mm -hmm. um, where people were like, oh, yeah, it's good for your body to reset so that you, when you fast for like 16 hours but you also have to be eating the food and your body has to be in a safe space to be able to do that. And I thought it was, but I was getting sick all the time. Yeah. And I know now that I was not and am not. It, I Now I bounce from being in a good, safe, happy place to being like, oh, we're back down here. Cool. But I know what to do to get me back up there. Yeah. Thanks to what you. were you trying to what were you trying to achieve do you think doing these things was it just doing the right thing or was there a feeling or a particular you know way of life that you were wanting to live like I, I know when we talk about this and I reflect things back to you sometimes you are like oh my you know you get a little bit um taken back you're like oh my god that was so long ago I don't even remember that version of me so like I'm really getting you to stretch backwards but you know what were you looking for do you think back then when you were doing the fasting or you know doing the um Ashley Bynes program a lot of it was probably aesthetic stuff I always have had a skewed perception of what my body looks like like when I was, I don't know, 23, 24, I always thought I was like the big girl. And I look at those photos of me now, I'm like, oh, look how skinny and pretty I was. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but I know in myself that I didn't feel good. Like if I was getting headaches all the time, uh, I was getting sick all the time, that the acne, I knew something wasn't right but I just didn't know how to solve that. And, I, like, I went to see naturopaths and stuff and they just give you these potions and send you on your way, whereas it's not really a, a lifestyle change, I think. It's almost like process of elimination, though, isn't it? As in, like, when you go to see these other, you know, do programs or see certain practitioners, it's like, oh, you know, if I remove all the stuff, all the bad stuff from my diet, I'll hopefully find the thing that's making me giving me the headaches or giving me the bad skin. Like if I take enough away, I'll get my answers. Yeah. I mean, I've been gluten-free. I've done, yeah, done all those different things. And one of the biggest things I noticed by going to a naturopath is by adding beetroot to my diet, my gut changed. And mm -hmm. that was a positive thing. So I kept that in there for a long time, but I don't like beetroot, so I don't eat it anymore. <laughs> I send a little text message to my best friend every time I eat beetroot. I'm like, just letting you know, because she's a physio, I'm an exercise physiologist. So we, when we went through uni, we had this whole like, um, like we know quite deeply about anatomy and physiology. And when we were learning different things, we would like call each other out. And I was like, just letting you know that tomorrow when I think I'm dying of da 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 da, I just had beetroot today. Can you remind me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so what? So you came to me you know, we had a mutual connection yeah. and you came to me with this PCOS diagnosis. What was happening? Like, what was, what were you trying to investigate then? Like, what was PCOS to you? I say that because for those of you listening, PCOS is um, polycystic ovarian syndrome and syndrome is 
basically a name for a collection of symptoms. And everyone you talk to that has a PCOS diagnosis will have similarities, but their experience will be really different. So Sinead, talk to your experience and you know where, how it really came to a head where you're like, I've got to fucking figure this out. Doctors are always like, it's this, it's not this, it is this, it's not this with PCOS. And some are like, oh, but you don't have cysts on your ovaries. And I'm like, cool, so I don't have PCO. But I've got like 10 of the other symptoms that you say has to be categorized. Um, what was the question? Why did I come to you? Or what was? <laughs> what, were, what was your experience with PCOS? So what was the things that were leading you in that direction? I wasn't comfortable in my body, physically and mentally, I think. Um, it just... It just felt like nothing in my body was sitting right. Um, that's probably the best description I can give it. Talk to me about your periods. Talk to me about you've kind of touched on your energy. Um, like you are, you guys come from a really active family. Like, you know, your brother's off adventure. Like you, you do these insane family holidays that like I remember the first time you guys went on holiday was to – Somewhere on the like New South Wales coast and you went and did like buggy driving or something. Yeah, we did can in New South Wales. Yeah, like all these insane things. And so, you know, you've got this really high energy, um, adventurous family mm-hmm. and you kind of felt like you were towing the line, right? Like you just, like you wanted to be involved, but it was a fucking effort. Yeah, because I was exhausted. Yeah. But I thought that's how everyone felt. And then I was like, oh, maybe it's not how everyone feels. Maybe everyone is not always perpetually pushing themselves to do the things. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so the energy was a huge thing. Um, I've never slept well and I just thought that was what my body is like because my mum's the same. Um, It's really easy to pass it off, isn't it, when we – you're like, oh, my mom does that. Oh, my dad does that. And I was like, it doesn't have to be your experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had the acne. I had gut issues. I was always wired but tired. Cycle. <sighs> I mean, I went from the pill straight to the IUD. And so I suppose I don't really know exactly how my cycle was before a lot before you, but I would what always get really bad. was your choice to go on hormonal contraception? Was it primarily for contraception? For the IUD, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not for the pill. Yeah, the pill was the acne stuff when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but I would always get really bad cramps. Um, I'd get really anxious beforehand. I'd get bloating. I'd get the tears. Um I'd get the headaches, but I didn't know that at the time because I had headaches all the time. (laughs) I'd get more acne. Um, I think that's probably like it was just all bad, Mm -hmm. I suppose. Um, And then working with you, I came off the IUD and I suppose it's been two and a half years almost. Um, and you make it sound like, oh, it's just been two and a half years, you know, like, and we've done a lot at the end. Thanks for listening guys. <laughs> like we <laughs> haven't even started on this journey with you. Yeah. yeah. Well now my last. Like everyone else, Sinead's not very good at speaking about highly about herself. So, you know, I'm going to like really drag her through the trenches to, you know, highlight all the work that she's done to, you know, educate you guys. But, you know. Mm. I think the context and where we started was really important. Well, talking about cycle now, it's always within one or two days of like I, I, 30 days is generally my cycle. My period will go heavy on the first day, medium for two days and then light, like exactly the same every time. I'll get cramps the day before, but they'll be like mild. So I'll be like, oh, okay, I think we're coming tomorrow. Sometimes I don't get cramps at all. Um, I do still get the sort of anxiety sads beforehand, um, but not as bad as they were. Um, and as everyone should, I assume some bloating, but that's just because my body's changing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's how scary was it at the thought of, you know, so you and I had probably been working together for how long before you decided you wanted to come off the IUD? I think I started with working with you in September and I came off in December. 
because you were just like, you must. And my mom had been drilling that into me for a couple of years beforehand. And so she was like, Mel says this, I say this. And I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> let the record show that Mel's coaching style has definitely changed in the last two and a half years. <laughs> no, Mel um, has learned that Sinead needs to be pushed and tested and stretched more. Um, and so that's how you coach me specifically. <laughs> not everyone's cup of tea, but it works. I'm not sitting there being like, here are the terms and conditions for working with me. You must come off hormonal birth control within certain, like the, the first 30 days of working together. Um, so talk to me about, you know, you and I started working together. I'm telling you, you know, we need to eat a certain way. You need to get more in touch with your body. We need to you know, fix your sleep. We need to do all this stuff. Like what are the thoughts going through your mind at this point? Why? And how's that going to help? <laughs> so as we've learned, I love being told what to do, but I need the research to back mm -hmm. it up and tell me why. Otherwise I'm not going to want to do it. And I think it was a while before I found out why I needed to eat more or why I needed to have the carrot salad. Like what specifically the carrot salad is good for. Um, because otherwise I'm like, well, I don't like it. I don't want to have it. Um, I did have a lot of resistance on eating more food. You probably remember that quite well because one of my biggest goals was I wanted to lose weight. But I discovered fairly quickly, I think, probably by March. So what's that, four months or five months or something working with you that if I eat more, I have more energy. And I was happier and I was like, oh, I wonder if this has got to do with orange juice. <laughs> Let's blame the orange juice. Nothing else that we've been doing together. Well, the orange juice was something that made me very happy and I now had a – someone has gone, you should have orange juice. And I'm like, yes, I will have it all day, every day. Didn't listen to anything else for the first six months that I said, but you're here sipping on orange juice. <laughs> well, that's that stuck in my mind that I didn't want the carrot salad and I did want the orange juice. It's a crazy thing to think though, right? Like, you know, here you are, you're like, fuck, I get sleep. I'm tired. Like what's going on? And I want to lose weight. And here's this chick on the other end of Zoom saying, hey, Sinead, I think we need to eat some more or I think we need to change how we're eating. Yeah. But also like, at the same time, you're like, don't do park run. Don't, don't, I don't want you running. I don't want you doing cardio. And I was like, but you're making me eat more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right. going to get better. <laughs> but did that happen? A little bit, but then it disappeared. <laughs> My body had to realize that it was safe. Yeah. And I think it's also, yeah, we'll leave it at that. But yeah. So, but then also to realize in eating more, like you said, all of a sudden you start connecting these dots. You're like, oh, I have less cravings. Oh, I'm like, I am either sleeping better or having more energy or a bit of both. Um, and having more energy makes me happier. Like I, I can connect better and deeper with the people around me. My anxiety <laughs> isn't bad. And like all of these tiny little pieces coming together. But like you said, you know, you started me with, with me in the September and it was probably March by the point, by the time that you're like, Oh, I get the thing. So something else that I love to bring up for Sinead is, <laughs> Um, Sinead started with me under strict instructions. I'm not joining the gym. I'm not um, joining the gym. It is my favorite thing. I don't like exercising. I don't want to do it. Um, and it was probably, was it May or June? I joined the gym on the 5th of May. So the 5th of May, I remember getting, um, I either remember your face popping up or getting a text message. I just remember really like abrupt announcement I joined the gym <laughs> and I was like okay <laughs> yep. where did that come from when if you were this person that was so adamant that you were not going to be a gym person to all of a sudden you're like oh I'm joining the gym what where happened did... I got engaged <laughs> Sinead <laughs> I joined the gym exactly a month after I got engaged <laughs> is that the only reason you joined the gym Oh, no, it was probably a good shove in the right direction because I'd probably been thinking about it for a while because yeah. um, that's something that Tom does every single weekday morning uh, before work. He goes to the gym and he's been doing that for 11 years. <laughs> so I've, I've had been woken up by him doing that every morning and 
it's just, I suppose, slowly been seeping in and you saying, oh, we need to do this movement. And you gave me some workout stuff to do at home, but it's not very interesting when you've got like one band and two dumbbells and that's it. Um, yeah. So I think it was just a slow, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Immersion, I guess. Um, coming from a few sides. But it was the same as everything, right? Like I get you in the gym and I, again, I remember you, you know, there's that video of you doing the kettlebell deadlift and you were petrified. You're like, I can't go too heavy. Like this is the, like, this is like, we're laughing at this, but you were scared, Sinead. Like you were not comfortable doing the thing. And no. so, yeah, there's this beautiful video of you figuring out how to do this kettlebell deadlift and you, it's beautiful because you were taking yourself so seriously. Like in that moment, you were like, I am doing the thing. I am going to learn. I am doing the thing. And it was part of the reason it was so beautiful is because you were so frightened, but you were like, I'm going to do it. Like I'm, I'm leaning into this. And then it wasn't fucking long before you were standing on the deadlift platform. I So for context for everyone else, I've created an Instagram page that's just like me and Mel um, where I've uploaded all my... It. Don't try and find it. <laughs> <laughs> you won't even be able to. It's not my name. Um, but it's all the videos, like the first videos I took to send Mel of that deadlift. Like of the first day I joined the gym, I've taken photos of me from front on and side on in the ladies' room because I was too scared to go into the rest of the gym Um, and doing that deadlift as well, which is like 12 kilos. And I look so hesitant. My face is so serious and I'm concentrating so hard. And I look back at that now, like I watched it this morning and I burst out laughing. I was like, look at the little weight. (laughs) (laughs) But like what would you, you know, if you saw – if we had a time machine and we took you back to that, you know, you're, you have somehow walked into the gym at the same time as you were doing this kettlebell deadlift, what would you say to yourself? The first thing that came to my head then was you've got this, keep going. It gets better. Yeah. I mean, two years ago, I didn't want to join a gym. Two years ago, I didn't like exercising. And what am I doing now, Mel? I what work are you at doing? <laughs> I work at a gym five days a week, um, not as a PT because that's a whole other thing. Um, but I'm there every day in gym clothes talking to people who's exercising or getting new people to join and telling them my story of like, oh, and this is the space that you can do it and if you have any questions. and Yeah. Because you yeah. see the value in it now, don't you? I do. Yeah. And you I also see- know how fucking terrifying it is for people. Hmm. Particularly, yeah, those who have never joined a gym before. Um, I mean, you get those people that do know everything about gyms already and they're like, yeah, no, I'm good, fine. And you're like, okay, cool, have fun. <laughs> but I like to the- come and ask the weird questions though. Don't you find? Like the, people that, like the people that really know the gym and like are confident in the gym are always the one to come and ask you like the really obscure questions and you're like, mm, I thought you knew what you were doing. <laughs> Well, most of the time they come and ask me if we've got a piece of equipment and I'm like, can you describe to me what it looks like? Because I don't know the names of things. <laughs> for sure. So for for reference also, what are you deadlifting now? The most recent one was 85, I think. For one rep? 12. So I imagine it's quite a bit higher if I'm... Girl, get back down to South Australia. I want to be testing your 1RM. <laughs> yes. I'm sure be deadlifting more than me. I mean, <laughs> that's a fun goal. Tom, Tom said last night that he's um, benching 80 kilos, and I was like, cool, well, there's my goal. <laughs> I'm going to beat you. <laughs> Good luck with that goal. There are many women that would love that goal um, for whatever oh, reason. Yeah. I just want to beat him at things, but he doesn't know how to deadlift anything, so I've got him there. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So, Sinead. Obviously, you and I did a lot of work on like food and exercise, but those things kind of came naturally when we started including other pieces of the puzzle as well. 
you know, we didn't solely focus on food and we obviously didn't solely focus on exercise. Like those things, the progression of those things kind of fell into place as they needed to. Would you agree? Yes. I think, I mean, the exercise kind of fell in there because it sort of fit the mould of everything that was moving forward. Um, But we did a lot of value stuff and a lot of, I think, educating things, which you gave me lots of books and I like reading books. (laughs) How many books did you read last year? 37 or 39 or something. How many books did you read the year before? 52. (laughs) How many have I read this year? Nine. Oh, my God. Um, my coach just gave me another book to read and I was like, when, when, do, we, when do people have the time to do this stuff? Anyway. Um, um, oh, fun little side story. There's a chick at the gym who's just done her first um, bodybuilding comp and mm. she comes into the gym every morning and does her thing. And she finished the comp. She's still covered in tan that she's trying to get rid of. She's on the treadmill. It's on the, like a, a huge incline. And she's walking there reading a physical novel. She's like powering up this hill and she's reading a novel. And I was like, that is goals. (laughs) If I can walk on a treadmill and actually read a book, I'm like, that's awesome. I normally get all the books. There you go. When you move back down to SA, you can get one of those like desk ones or something. (laughs) Or I'll just continue with my audio books. Yeah, those things. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, we did a lot on like values and... It, like you like you said, education-based stuff. What were some of the biggest realizations that you had in the first 12 months of working together of the importance of recognizing these things within yourself? Um, I mean, I think doing like the values factor, determining what my val- top values are and then working how, working out how to, how I implement them or include them in my day-to-day, I think was really useful. Um, and then I've done them maybe once a year since then and they do change a bit like my my health and exercise one keeps bumping itself further up there but that's what I work with you for and it should be going up there because I pay a lot of attention to all of that now um yeah I think just including or working out what those values are to then go okay so Mel wants me to do this and this is the reason why I should be doing this and that connects to this value how um and so that I think set it in stone as to why it was important or why it's something I should do. Because there's enough things that I'm trying to do in my life that why should I suddenly try and fit in this other thing that someone else tells me is good? Right. But it's also more so, um, you know, from my coaching perspective, you know, I eat a certain way, I move a certain way, I I have a certain nighttime routine. Like all of these things fit my life, and it's really hard to you know, I think a lot of coaches and a lot of coaching programs kind of go, here's the tools, like these are the things you need to do, go and do them. And if Mm. you don't understand who you are, what you like, what you're working towards, sure, you can apply these things for a short amount of time, but they're not going to stick with you when all of a sudden, if you can see the reason why you're doing things is because your relationship with your husband's going to be better. You know, you can get more out of your family holidays, you know, that you are going to walk down the aisle on your wedding day feeling the way that you want to feel like all of a sudden you have a bigger purpose to be doing the things for yourself I think a big thing is that I'm now like I know who I am now like I feel more confident in myself my abilities who I am and why I do the things I do so if someone like for example, my dad is like, oh, you shouldn't eat right before bed. Shouldn't because eating, doesn't that make you like Homer Simpson that you just like, oh, donut. And I'm like, well, no. And these are my reasons why. And three years ago, that would have made me burst into tears and I probably wouldn't have eaten for a couple of days. Well, that's a lie. Um, but now I'm just like, well, this is the education behind. I can give it to you if you want, but if you don't want it, I'm going to keep doing it anyway. Not even the education, like you're certain in it and you've collected enough data in yourself to go, this shit works. This shit is lead. I like who I am. I like how I feel. I'm going to keep doing this. I think I really would like you to share the story a little bit more of you and your dad and how doing this work, how you've seen it 
seep into your other relationships, specifically the relationship with your dad? Well, I suppose our parents have come from that generation where butter is bad and like vegetable oils are good for you and all these things and pasta is bad and have this instead. And I'm suddenly going home and I'm like, nope, we're not using any of these. We're going to use butter or going to use ghee. And they're like, we should just have a little bit of it. I'm like, nope, <laughs> all of it. Uh, or I'm eating more. I'm like, nope, fruit is great. Let's eat all the fruit or every meal that like, we'll have, I don't know, a steak or whatever it is. And I'm like, cool, but we need 200 grams of potato. And mum and dad are always trying to put on like one tiny little potato on there and then all the other like green veggies, which I love. But now I know why carbs are good. I'm like, nope, give me more. Yeah. Um, and mum and dad, well, dad particularly couldn't see why eating more was good and why eating these things that they've learned for so long are deemed bad. Um, and then I suppose I come home and I eat that way on holidays and I use the home gym that they've got there and dad comes up and he sees me deadlifting 65 kilos and I have lost weight and he's like, well, lost weight but put on muscle and he's like, oh, but you're eating more and this is, so he's like, okay. And so slowly I've been going, ah, oh, let's eat this or let's change your toast with jam and butter. Let's add in an egg or let's add in some ham or chicken or whatever it is to try and change that. And this is why. And dad, my brother brought my parents a exercise bike, like a stand standstill exercise bike, and they just did not use it until I came home for holidays and just started getting on there in the morning and eating all these things and now dad uses the bike every day and mum uses the bike every day and my brother's been trying for years to get them to exercise and to change their diet and they wouldn't but I didn't tell them to do it I just did it myself and they saw it you showed them nice yeah I that's I would like that story is such a like pivotal I just yeah remember you telling me that story and how excited you were because obviously we love our parents and these stories I you know every one of my clients has a story about be it a husband or um, a parent or you know someone in their circle being able to influence them without directly giving instruction as to how they do something and I think this is why it's also so important to know who we are what we like and really how to fuel up because it inspires others to do it too. Mm. I suppose I didn't like it when you just told me, here, eat this carrot salad, here, walk 10,000 steps, here, have this. But I No, Sinead's like, I'm going to eat two carrot salads. I'm going to walk 20,000 steps. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'll be like, we'll be on a group coaching call and I'll be like, okay, everyone, can you give me one example of such and such? And Sinead will be like, well, I have three examples. (laughs) Sorry, Sinead. That doesn't show an overachiever. I don't know what does. Not at all. (laughs) (laughs) But I think my, the thing I've probably struggled a lot with is also my greatest strength is that if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it properly and I'm all in. Um, which I was almost going like- to pause you on that for a second because it was almost like you almost wanted it to be more complicated than it was. Like I'd give you a really simple thing and you'd be like, oh, yeah, and? Like what's the other thing? And I'd be like, how about we just do the thing? Let's just do this one thing and see what happens. And you're like, yeah, but I can probably do more. I'm like, I know you can probably do more, but how about the challenge is we don't do more? Like, and so that for you is really like, but it can't be that simple. Like, you know, and I don't want to make this a weight loss episode, but, you know, so, you know, we did do a little bit of a weight loss journey for Sinead, um, leading into her wedding. And again, it was basically me just to keep continually encouraging her to eat more and me resisting and you continually losing weight. Like you almost lost more weight when we weren't in an intentional deficit than when we were just trying to find your maintenance. And we're talking like, well, like 22, 2300 calories at this point. Like we're not talking the 1200 that she started with. So we've essentially doubled her calorie intake. 
you were going to the gym at least three times a week, you know, no more than four times a week. Like it wasn't as if you were going six days doing two hour sessions. No. Um, it was really just honing in on your basics. So what do you, what do you know to be your absolute basics now? I mean, my favorite two are my food and my sleep, I would say. Um, my non-negotiable is I shall be eating and I shall not be ashamed of eating and I'm going to bring snacks wherever I go. (laughs) Um, I went, yeah, like I'll eat breakfast And then I'll go to work, which is the gym. I'll have a snack while I'm at the gym. Then I'll have a snack before I work out, if it's one of my workout days, which was yesterday, not today. Then I'll come home and I'll eat lunch. And then at like three or four o'clock, I'll have another snack. And then I'll have dinner. And then I'll have, whether it be some yogurt and stewed apple or milk and honey or whatever before I go to bed. Um, I went out for breakfast the other day and I had breakfast before I went out for breakfast. (laughs) crazy right like and eat it um but this year because we haven't been counting the calories specifically I've been counting I suppose a week here and there just to make sure that I'm hitting 2400 at a minimum because I'm now working at the gym for four hours a day moving I think I've lost weight but I haven't weighed myself just my clothes fit differently um so maybe I've just put on muscle and not lost weight but I'm like but I've eaten way more than I would normally eat um but it's because my body is going okay we can do this now how does it feel to how does it feel you know like because realistically I mean two and a half years probably feels like a lifetime ago how does it feel to really have that flip that you know you can eat more you can move your body in ways that you probably never thought possible two and a half years ago um to this idea that you have to eat healthy to have the body that you want and to feel the way you want to feel in your body how does that mind can you explain a little bit about how you feel about that mindset flip and how you would maybe describe that to somebody else i when i first started with you and we were counting and i think the beginning we started off at me eating 1800 and it was way lower than that girlfriend because I remember get, like I think we even started like 1500 because I remember getting you to be like come on let's go to 1600 like I remember the fight to get you to like even add 100 calories was like I was force feeding you um mm. like like it was guaranteed I was going to make you be like 300 kilos by the end of the month like it was you were petrified I was yeah, yeah. But I remember, like, let's go with 1,800 because that's what sticks in my mind. Um, Trying to get there, I would count, like, these minuscule things. I'd do, like, oh, half a teaspoon of honey. I'd put everything in and then I would serve it just to make sure that I was hitting my macros or it wasn't going even one calorie over that 1,800 because when it went red, then I'd done bad. But you're saying, sorry, just for the context, like, if you're tracking on an app, if it was yeah. to go red, then you were in the red wrong. Red you were over. I was probably like, I remember you doing that. Actually, you specifically tried to hit under your targets to yeah, say. Yeah, because for the entire, I don't know, 10 years previously, you wanted to go less than what the calories were because then it was green and that was good. Mm. But now, like, I remember that just being like so st- stressful is not the word, but I found a very uncomfortable because I didn't want to eat that many I didn't want to go over and now looking at that and I'm like counted last week but I didn't count this week um I hit 2400 and I'm like hmm I'm still hungry what am I gonna have look at my macros ah it doesn't matter I made a cookie or I make this piece of fruit or let's just have a cup of milk because I'm hungry, so therefore my body's telling me something. So I'm listening to it more. But I'm ex- like counting to the 2400. I'm like, <laughs> let's add this, let's add this. It doesn't matter. And I'm so it's. There's no half a teaspoon of honey anymore, kind of thing. No, last night I grabbed like, you know, when you get honey and you just kind of scoop the whole thing and it's like overflowing and like half heaped. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> a teaspoon of honey. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think I, I'm just not afraid of. I can't say I was afraid of food, but I was scared it was going to make me fat. But now I know that it it doesn't and that 
I thought protein was good and green veggies were good, but don't eat, don't ever eat fruit, don't ever have carbs, don't eat bread. Um, but that's where you get your energy from. Like, where is Damn. this energy coming from? Why didn't I know all of this information? Yeah. Um, so just like learning that I can have a cup of orange juice and it's going to actually make me feel more energetic. So now if I'm tired, I don't have another cup of coffee. I go and have some sort of carbohydrate, like a piece of fruit or a glass of orange juice or something like that. Cause I'm like, Oh, I need that energy. Wonder where energy comes from. <laughs> well, it comes from, and you're right. Like it comes from both. And I think as well, something that I really, like I knew within myself, but when I was coaching you, it really became apparent is also the more energy we have, the more energy we have to do with our emotional stress. And so mm. there's two really big moments that I have that, with you and you might have some different moments, but the moment when we worked through the live, the nude draw, not, yeah, the nude drawing, the live story. Um, and then was- your wed- like the incident around your wedding as well. And so um, just for a bit of context, Sinead's an artist and um, had, am I allowed to tell this story? Yeah, go for your life. <laughs> had this opportunity to be a model in, um, a live drawing class and Sinead signed up to it going, yep, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to step outside my comfort zone, like go me, I'm great. And then obviously leading into it, it was like, holy fuck, what have I signed up to? Like I don't have quote unquote the perfect body. Like, and so what did we, what was the process like that we worked through for that? Um, Well, the biggest thing that sticks in my mind was um, talking about what the benefits of being the size I currently am and the drawbacks if I was any if I had quote unquote the perfect body and so we listed a few of them um and then you were asking me questions about like what other like what do I think when I'm drawing someone um, and I was like, well, I don't even notice the body. I just notice the shapes and the lights and the darks and it makes zero difference. And the bigger bodies, they're more interesting to draw because they've got the curves. And so you made me list, I think, all of those things as well. Um, and then I knew that we'd hit the moment, that the, the trigger for me when I said the thing and burst into tears. And I can't for the life of me remember what the thing is right now. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, and, you know, again, we've, we've just, you know, we've said this in a 30 second clip kind of thing, but you know, this process was an over an hour long where I was like, Sinead, think about this. What's the thing? Think about this. Go deeper on this. What's the thing? And Sinead sitting there going, I don't know. I don't know. There are no benefits. Why would anyone want to draw me? Like I'm revolting. Like, not that I said, use those words. No, but, but it was, you know, it wasn't an, it wasn't as an easy process as you and I are relaying it to be. No, it was a real uncomfortable and stretch. And as usual, I pushed back. I was like, nope, we're not answering this. There's no answers to this question. Yeah. And you're like, there is. Sit here and think about it. I'm like, I don't want to sit here and think about it. It makes me uncomfortable. You're like, sit, think. <laughs> the answer is there. God, I'm going to get you to like do I don't even know all of my impressions. We're going to do an episode of just Mel impressions, I think, or something of like things Mel says, and I would just be mortified. Yeah. Um, well, with the life drawing, that was the first one I did, and I was in like a ball gown kind of thing for it. I've done another one where I was in bras and undies um, and had like a little drapey thing, and then I did one last year just before we went down for the wedding where I was wearing a G-string and nothing else. And that one stretched me. That one was hard, but no one cared. It was a room full of ladies that just wanted to draw someone. And so that was interesting. But, yeah, I just. You were also, though, pleasantly surprised, weren't you? Like when you saw the work that these, and they're amateur artists, right? Like they're not as if they're professional artists that, you know, sketch for a living. Like these are essentially amateur artists just wanting to have a bit of fun, when they showed you their images back, how did you feel? Some of them, you felt really good about it. You're like, oh, is that what I look like? Is that how you see me? Because they're not drawing me how I am. They're drawing me how they see me. Um, and others, I didn't like how they saw me. <laughs> but that's okay. They were probably at a really funny angle. Um, but it, I think it was a really good moment to go, 
okay, so there's 13 people in this room and they all see me completely differently and I don't see myself the way I see myself in uh, the way I any of these drawings are. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. So that was kind of an interesting moment. I've got most of the pictures, the ones that people want to give me, I've kept them all. Yeah. So then there was also the moment from the wedding we had a, you know, a little, we won't go into details with it because I assume that some of your people might listen to this episode, but there was a, um, Sinead didn't feel as present at the, as at the, or the, one of the events leading into the wedding as she would have liked to. And we did some work around that. And that was another, that was a moment where we chose not to work through it. I was like, this is too fresh. You need to sit in this like it needs to, it doesn't, I think you need to feel this. I don't think it needs to be resolved right now. And then what happened? Well, there, I think we're talking about two separate moments. I think we might be two. I think I'm getting two different ones confused. So the first one we did work through um, and you just kept saying, what's the benefit of you feeling like this? Um, what is it? And kept going through and I ended up coming up with a moment that I even told her about it last weekend and while I told her about it, I started crying again telling that story to her, which is what happened to me when we worked out that that was the thing that was mm. special about that moment. Mm. Um, and, again, it's connection with a friend. Someone was helping me and showing me why I'm valuable and why these moments are good. Um, and then I think the second one you're talking about is I was grieving that the wedding, the honeymoon, that the whole Christmas period down being down there is over and I'm back up here and I don't have anything to organize and I don't get to live any of that fun again. And you, you said you didn't want to work through it with me yet. And I said it didn't feel right to work through. I didn't say I didn't want to. I was like, this is something's up here. This isn't the right moment. And then that weekend I got, all my wedding photos and wedding video through. And then Tom and I had this really nice sort of weekend where we went through everything. And then that, I suppose that charge with what I was upset with was no longer there. Yeah. So, you know, when you look at, when you look back at the last two and a half years, Sinead, what do you think the most important thing is that you've done for yourself? That's a big question. Um, I suppose it's, twofold where I've now given myself the space and the time to be present and learn about my body and educate myself on all of the things that we do with you with the basics and cycles and what to eat and um, exercise and everything and at the same time giving myself the space to learn that stuff and to be a beginner and to work myself, work my way through it to get to the other point. I'm not going to say the other side because there's always more to do. Um, But I still don't realise how far I've come until we look back, until I look back at that video of me doing the cute little 12 kilo deadlift. (laughs) Your Um, warm-up deadlift. (laughs) Not even. (laughs) I warmed up on like 50 kilos the other day. (laughs) Um, yeah, just to reflect, like you sent me a photo of my face on our first Zoom session and I didn't realize that my face has changed shape. And in that photo, I'm puffy, I'm yellow, I look miserable. And just without that reflection, you don't realize how far you've come, I suppose. No. Um, I think I just wanted to acknowledge that, you know, you weren't just focusing you were for you for the last two and a half years you've been focusing on living your life like it hasn't been a solely diet and exercise plan you have been doing this to have better experiences like it's not a um yeah well one of the big things I remember years ago um I was doing this sort of health kick um and 
on Christmas Day, I didn't want to break it. So I didn't drink any alcohol. I didn't eat the cake. I didn't do the things, whatever it was that you do on Christmas. And I don't remember anything about that Christmas other than I didn't eat the food. Yeah. Whereas working with you and learning about food and learning about exercise and going, well, the whole idea is that we need to live our life. We need to enjoy those moments and eating I don't know, let's go with eating 4,000 calories on Christmas Day isn't going to make a huge amount of difference because you're generally consistent and it's better to have eaten that stuff and laughed with your family and had those glasses of wine with your husband and um, watched your uncle fall asleep in his chair because everyone's having fun and they're the things that you remember in the long run. You don't remember not eating the food. You don't remember sitting there and being like, no, I can't go out and do this. I have to bring my own little meal. I'm not going to go out for brunch with my friends. Yeah. So it's just been a nice balance sort of putting that into perspective, I suppose. What would you tell someone who is experiencing what you were experiencing three years ago? That they, you have to put in the work to learn who you are, but it's, worth it and the things that you think are important four years ago are not going to be important to you four years later um and those crucial moments that you think are like pivotal you you either won't remember them or they made you learn something that you're like oh okay well that doesn't matter let's focus on this I'm a completely different person than I was four years ago And I don't want to go back to that person because she was sick. She was stressed. She was miserable. She was, I suppose, scared of food. And now I'm like, oh, I'm going to eat all of it. (laughs) (laughs) So then, I mean, this might be the same question, but what would you say if you had to start all over again, what, what would the top three things be for you to do? The first three things I would do. Sinead's going to give us four. Just you watch. (laughs) Um. (laughs) The first thing I think would be the thing that I had the most resistance in would be eat more. Just do it. Just eat the food and put that yeah, as a massive I priority. That, I because I that for you, but at the same time, you did it perfectly. Like we could have gone. <laughs> True. I had a list of things I could eat and a target to hit. Yeah. And so that's my spreadsheet brain coming in. Um. But I still had all the resistance against it because I didn't know that it would give me more energy. I didn't know that it would help me sleep better, that, um, yeah, so many symptoms would change just because of how much food I'm eating or the types of food or when I'm eating. Yeah. So I suppose the hardest thing I found to do would probably be my first point of call now. The second, because you wanted three, right? (laughs) I've actually just thought of another question. So, yeah, answer this and then. (laughs) I would say find some sort of movement that you enjoy. Don't try and force yourself into doing the thing that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Like I did salsa classes and that was great fun Um, and that got me moving and then that took me in the journey to go, okay, so if I'm enjoying moving like this because now I've eaten the food that I've had the energy, it brought me slowly towards the gym and now I enjoy that. Um, I did discover recently that I don't like supersets or um, fast-paced cardio circuit things like hit workouts. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, chatting to a PT and I described what I why I enjoyed it. He goes, and now you understand why people power lift because they get to sit down for five minutes between yeah. sets. And I was like, I love it. <laughs> In my defense, I was the leanest I'd ever been when I was powerlifting because it was like pure strength based. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, not about me. Your third thing, please. Oh, I don't know if I've got three right now. Um, listen to your body. Like tricky one. How do you listen to your body? Like, do you essentially were? I guess you were essentially listening to your body. You just didn't know. How. I didn't know what signs were. I didn't yeah. know what. I suppose I had to learn through you and through the books that I read or listened to to find out that, oh, that's a symptom of this or 
if you're feeling, if you're waking up in the middle of the night, it's because you haven't eaten enough food um, because your body doesn't have the energy to sleep. And you're like, ah, oh, okay. So learn, I suppose learning those things has now helped me listen to my body and go, okay, so that this has happened and that's because I haven't done this. Um, I didn't sleep well. So that could be because I was stressed about a particular situation or because I didn't eat enough or I had alcohol or something like that or I've got these period symptoms. Okay, let's look back at what happened there and why that might be causing that. And now I've got the education. I know the background of those things. So I can do that. Excellent. What do you think the most powerful thing being, and when I say her advantage, I mean in the group with your peers? What's the most powerful powerful thing about it? Mm -hmm. What have you gotten out of it? I think probably that we're all in the same metaphorical boat, that the things that I'm struggling with, the others are also struggling with or have struggled with. And it's got that like nice community of support. What's, what have you been struggling with? Let's hear it out. And then you can either just give the feels, oh, that sucks. Or here's some advice on what I did to help with that. And so it's not always just coming from you. It's coming from the other girls that have gone through it. Yeah. Yeah. And then giving that same sort of support and advice back. I suppose it's nice, isn't it? watching the new girls come through and be like, oh, I've been through that. This is what I took away from it. Or this is me three years down the track. You also get to meet yourself with a little bit more compassion, don't you? Like when you, when the newbies come in and you're like, you really get to see, you get reintroduced to, to where you started. Right. And so you're like, wow, you know, you're doing the thing and it makes you want to celebrate them even harder, but it makes you like, Again, recognize that in yourself. I wish I had a little cheer squad back in the day for me. That you did. You had me. <laughs> yeah, but before that as well. <laughs> like, yeah, to see some of the girls come through and the things they're struggling with and then they do that thing. Well, I suppose for me I'm just like, oh, yeah, I did that thing. It's minor. It doesn't count. It doesn't matter because it's small. And then you're like, Sinead, that's huge. And I'm like, oh, is it? I just kind of shoved it back in the box because there's no end point when people do like, I suppose analogy is like people exercise for aesthetics and they want to lose weight or they want to look better. Where's the goal point of that? Like you can always, do they want to just keep going down until they're zero kilos? Um, Or do they, how big are they going to try and, grow their glutes because they want that booty that is not attainable and they're just going to keep going so I suppose to have those more tangible goals like let's see if we can get my temp to this level um in the morning or let's see if we can hit this deadlift goal or these calories and how does that make you feel and then having those people to cheer you on behind because they fucking get it like they get how big the small things are yeah so Sinead is there anything that you and is there anything that we've forgotten is there anything that you would like to mention or say I don't think so you did bring up a lovely point yesterday in our one-on-one call and you were like let's talk about that tomorrow but I don't remember what that was (laughs) and I don't think you do either you're like can you say that exactly the same as that I'm like sure um I don't remember the point like I remember saying it but I don't remember what it was (laughs) isn't that a problem Well, my notes from yesterday is connecting your values with dot, 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 and being in the moment dot, dot, dot. So I think it might have something to do with those two things. (laughs) I think it was to do with the values and you, I think, and I think you might've already touched on it. You being, you know, that all of this work, you've been able to do this work because you've really been able to connect with yourself and you know, part of the reason that her advantage was born was because I was jumping between like personal development, human behavior, um, exercise coaching. And I was like, jump, like literally ping ponging backwards and forth. Mm -hmm. And I was like, these two need to work together. And they do very well. Really well. 
Um, it's funny because like some of the really big fitness groups are like really starting to dig into mindset and like, oh, you motherfuckers, I'm ahead of the time. <laughs> um, cool. So yeah, is there anything else you want to say? Or you? Uh, you know what? I'm going to think of it in 15 minutes time. And message right me. Now. Like, no, we need to hit record again. Yeah. Right now I can't think of anything specific. So Just- Sinead, I'm going to finish with one thing. What, you know, say you listen back to this episode in three years' time, what are you, what's a little message that you have for yourself, future Sinead? That's a really interesting question because mm. we've just spent the last hour looking back at where I've come from. Ooh. I don't even know where I want to be in three years' time doesn't matter like imagine if you're like walking along the beach you've picked up this little like glass bottle it's got a little message in it what does it say keep I suppose keep going you've got this it gets better not that it's not good now but I thought it was good three years ago and it's better than it was then yay yeah all right one sweet don't go too too deep (laughs) <laughs> okay. I, well, hello, it's you, Sinead. I fully expect that you would have opened up. There would have been a link to Audible and then, you know, the 13 chapter Audible book on <laughs> things that Sinead wishes well, I to. Mean, I got that. I can give you a list of all the books that everyone should read. I can give you all the spreadsheets for the tracking that I've done, all the journals that I've done with the prompts. And well, maybe we that, should do that. But... can you give can you give people like you know between one and three books like what are your top picks for for books that people need to get started and they don't have to be um health based books I I mean that fifth vital sign one mm-hmm. that you make us all read is one hundred percent something that everyone has to read. I like, think you say I make you do this because it's definitely under the suggested list. It's not mandatory reading. And you would be surprised how many people don't read and are still like, can you give me some book recommendations? I mean, like the list that's there. Well, anything that's even on those pieces of paper, I've done it. <laughs> the suggested reading, I read it. Um, yeah, the fifth vital sign. It's like I was 30. And I was like, I feel like I should have known this when I was 16. Um, This is my body we're talking about. I should already know this. Um, I also think The Midnight Library, which is a novel that Mm I made you read. You Um, made me. (laughs) Yeah, because it's all about regret and those little things you do in life and how your life is going to change or could change um because I mean still now I'm like I'm 33 there's all these things that I want to do like I'd love to go off and like work as a steward on a boat for a number of years and I'd love to go and backpack for a couple of years and I'd love to do this and be in corp but I can't do it all so I've got to sort of enjoy the journey that I'm on and pick that thing and this book was really nice to sort of make you realize that yes you might want this but actually let's come back to where you are because you can't, that might not have, you might have been in that point and gone, oh, I don't like this. I wish I did that. But you don't know that, do you? You don't. Yeah. So that's one of my favourite books ever. So Um, those two? Yeah. I think we'll stick with those two. Okay. Yeah. Well, Sinead, thank you so much for recording this episode with me. Um, you know, like I said at the beginning, it's a very, you are a very, very, very special human in my life, to me, to the coaching group, to her advantage. I really do hope you acknowledge that the work that you have done because you are paving the path for so many people to come after you and beside you on this. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Thanks for helping me get here. Yeah.